Okay, uh, my name is Jenny Munch, and I'm uh, in today's date is Saturday, August 24th, and we're in Flint, Michigan. Oh, and the name of my interview partner is Nick Custer. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Awesome. My name is Nick Custer. I'm 31 years old. Today is Saturday, August 24th, and we're in lovely Flint, Michigan. This is Jenny Munch, and she's my frenemy, and I'm very happy to be interviewing her today. So, Jenny, um, can you first give me a sense of who you are and what it is you do with your life? Uh, my name is Jenny Munch, and um, I just finished uh, another book called Near Future, and it is a few. A Futuristic science fiction collection of short stories, uh, and uh, but it's not dystopian. It is positive because I believe that we are spending way too much time thinking about how horrible the future is going to be, and what we need to do is visualize that good future so that we can then try to figure out what we need to do to get there. So I really um, am trying to promote discussion and I'm going to start a new series of videos called Why Not? And um, the first video is going to be about the, the water system, the irrigation system in Sri Lanka. So let's uh, put some context on that. You uh, recently took a trip to Sri Lanka, right? Right. Is it your first time in Sri Lanka? Yes. So tell me about it. Um, well, it's a, it's a great place. It's an island off of India. Uh, it has a variety of animals, including elephants. It's a lot of jungle, uh, mountains in the middle, and then coast is kind of flat. Um, it's it's just a really wonderful place. And you stayed with some friends while you were out there? Yes, I did. And so I was able to meet, um, you know, I, I was... I was not exactly a tourist all the time when I was with them because I met their personal friends that were people from the area and writers too because my friends were writers and English majors. So anyway, I got to meet a lot of really cool people. And um, I also got to explore. I had a driver that took me to the areas where this irrigation system, uh, like where the tanks and reservoirs and the canals that show you how it fits together and the fact that this is the most sophisticated irrigation system anywhere ever and it was built in 300 bc that's pretty cool and they've got documentations of it all all the way along uh, all the years and um so i took i have video of all of this the system and how it works and how it's integrated and how they did that so long ago that i really don't understand why we can't do that today i mean you've got the mississippi overflowing every year because of climate change even though we're not allowed to uh, say the word climate change, but um, it, we, it is there, and it's causing the Mississippi to flood every year, and why can't we drain that water into the west where we have drought every year now? I mean, there's definitely some problems. We've got to start also collecting our rainwater, which is a part of this irrigation system that they have, and they personally also do that in their homes, so and you, you use water there. Paint it's, the it's picture amazing. for me, because... Unfortunately, I couldn't go to Sri Lanka. So <laughs> tell me about the first one you saw. Like, I've seen a little bit of Mexico, Cenote, like a big pool of water. Is it like that, or what's it look like? Well, it's this big network of reservoirs, and then they have um, also something called tanks in each village. But the king, the king uh, in 300 B.C., <laughs> decided that, he, that no drop of water should be wasted and that he wanted a system that would take care of all of the people and the animals because this is the only Buddhist country. And, you know, I, I'm not a religious person, but I'm telling you, I think the Buddhist aspects of not killing, and uh, so there aren't a bunch of cattle and things wasting resources, uh, and the idea of merit, uh, where they're always trying to help other people for no other reason, be, but not for money, but because they want to get credit for going to the best place, you know, whatever right. they call that. Um, but anyway, that, that helped them to, the community built the system. The community built it. And, and it was built for the community. And it was, is there a lot of rainfall? Is there yeah, there's two monsoon it? systems, two, monsoon, um, two monsoons that come through. And, they're collect, and the system is made to collect all this water, and it's all integrated. So, like, if one kingdom didn't keep up their, their system, then it would affect the one's on the below them or above them or whatever uh, on the island and so everybody had to work together 
Oh, that's interesting. There has never been slavery there. Never. No one's ever been enslaved. So this system was done by people who just wanted to have water all over the island all the time. I mean, you know, obviously anyone should, but these people actually just pulled together and did it. And so there's these old water systems, these old kind of communal aspects of the culture, and is that still active today? Do you, you see that elsewhere? But in the videos that I got, you'll see um, there are, you'll come to this little village, and all the kids and adults, too, will be in the water swimming together. And they've got these little houses that are very, very simple and open, and there are animals everywhere that will just walk in any door that they can fit in, and nobody will complain. They'll be in a restaurant, and the, a, a, one of the dogs or a cat or a monkey will just come in with you, and you just kind of share the space with them, <laughs> and then they'll leave, and the animals themselves don't bother you, which is weird. Like these dogs, you know how you're always told that if a dog is left out, that it will, they will form packs, and then they'll become rabid and everything, and they do, maybe, you know, they do. But uh, over there, they have all of these dogs that just roam around and sleep on the side of the roads, and um, they don't bite, they don't bark, and everybody feeds them just like they do the rest of the animals mm -hmm. because there's no killing. There's, it's like a, the society itself just seems to be tamer, <laughs> you know? The people aren't, uh, there's no problem with guns or anything like that there. And so there, was there a lot of uh, religious diversity or was everybody all saw Buddhist? Buddhist? Almost all Buddhist, although there were Muslims and there were Christians. Um, I'd say those were the other only two types of religion really you saw besides uh, people who are Buddhist. But then some Christians would also be Buddhist. And, like, I went to a wedding uh, where the lady was Muslim, and they had a Muslim ceremony. And then two days later they had a Buddhist ceremony, and I went to that. I got to dress in a sari. And so <laughs> being an American and kind of not being familiar with the culture, although you had your friends there and you had yeah. people helping you out, yeah. did you feel kind of alienated or did you feel like you fit in and people helped you adapt? I felt like it was a portal, like I was peeking in on this world that I just have never seen or experienced before. It was, uh, it was kind of like watching a movie almost, you know? It was really interesting. What were some of the um, more different, unique kind of cultural characteristics around that? You know, or some of the traditions or some of the things that you weren't expecting? I um there is a, there is a cultural difference a big cultural difference and I did notice that tourism is is maybe too important there and right now because of the problems that they've had especially um they're not getting enough tourists and some of the places that we would go it would be a really nice hotel, but we would be the only ones there. Mm -hmm. And um, that happened several times, especially in Colombo. Colombo, that was this big hotel with a big... In fact, we climbed up and got all the way up onto the sign, and I got my picture taken on the sign. We're but anyway, it's it, but it's huge, and, um, and it has a nightclub and everything in the bottom of it, we, which we didn't stay awake long enough to go to. But, um, uh, but anyway, you could tell it was really fancy, and yet I do not recall seeing one other resident there and we were walking around the building and stuff just to see what was there was it was there, all empty was there a big military presence or a police yes, presence all the time I've, got, I've been frisked more in the last you know month than i have in my whole life they thought you um, were a suspicious <laughs> although character although the americans are much more aggressive than they are i'll tell you um the um what now they, they suspicious. thought you were no, suspicious because, no everybody was uh lots of military and police all the time um like checkpoints yeah checkpoints like we went to a parade a big parade, and I think uh, I think we were searched twice. Um, just as you're walking along, they'll have like a, a place and they have some police there. And they're looking for weapons or drugs. Well, or? because it was so actually it was like, like a guerrilla war. They've had a guerrilla war there before in the past. Um, there are different like there's the Tamil people and then there's the Shingalese people, uh, and those are the two major types of people that are there. I guess I guess call it types. Um, but um, they have different languages. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you see a sign, you usually see the same sign in English, English everywhere, and then Tamil, uh, and then uh, Shingalese on top. And uh, that's part of the war, too, is that they've had between the two groups. But then I, I know the Tamil Tigers, I think, are mostly Muslim Tamils, but I met Tamils that weren't Muslim. So it's like everything is kind of mixed up, and they're really pretty... Um, I mean, they, they were really nice to me, and even though I was, you know, different from everyone. Sure. 
Tell me a little bit about kind of your nature experiences. You said it was like a beautiful oh, yes. natural this island. This is another too. thing. This is a terrible thing that happened. Okay, um, there was, we were driving uh, downtown in a tuk tuk, tuk tuk, that's what they call them. They're like little three wheeled little three wheeled vehicles because the streets are narrow and there's like all of these crazy people driving these different varieties of uh, cars. And then you have the animals. I mean, you the cow will just walk onto the road in the city if it happens to be there. And then elephants too have blocked the roads a few times. And then we've got the monkeys and the dogs and the cats and the people walking. And I would never, never drive there. And they drive on the wrong side of the road, too, by the way. Probably the um, right one yeah. for them, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, so it is crazy uh, on the streets. But uh, my friend, uh, he was in the tuk-tuk, and he, we, I seen him on the corner clap his hands like he had gotten out of it. And so we turned around, we went down there, and he found this big monitor lizard was in one of the canals, mm. which was cool. So I got my camera out, and I'm taking a picture of this. And then I noticed that this is the worst thing about Sri Lanka people just throw the crap out the window. What do you mean? So there's a plastic bottles, plastic bags, everything along the sides of the roads all the time. Even though we got like the green team going in there and cleaning it up, they just throw them out out there. And they're not being fined. They're not enforcing their litter laws, and they need to do that. In fact, I was talking to them. I was telling them that we should, they should start an incentive where uh, not only do they enforce the fines, they people t- can tell on each other. They did this in England for people that are idling their cars. Um, they... Um, will will um actually give the person that calls in the the their the friend that they that they they saw littering um we give them a percentage of the fine so help me understand it yeah you, so you if look you did something can... like that i uh-huh. mean that would stop the litter but anyway but you look in the canal yeah we look in the, the I look in the canal. okay so anyway there's so there's all this litter but there's this big monitor lizard how big about i don't know maybe like this big um, How big is about, that? Um, that's for the radio. about maybe three foot long, four okay. foot long. Was he dark? Was he? He was scaly? just a lizard. Well, look online. I got the video on there. It's a monitor lizard, anyway, and he's down in this this canal, and it's got a little bit of water, but it's got all this junk in it, and so he noses around in the plastic, and then he found a plastic bag, a pink plastic bag, throws it up in the air, catches it, and swallows it. Thinking it was food. I guess so. But you know that lizard, he's not going to be able to digest that. He's probably going to end up dying, yeah. you know. And maybe that's not the only one he swallowed. But anyway, so Did, were I... Were people concerned for that monitor lizard? Yes, everybody. Everybody was like, oh, no, don't do it, don't do it, you know. And then he, But he ate respect. it. And, <laughs> and they ate it. He ate it. So I've got the video out there right now. And uh, I have a little message on there saying that we've got to refuse plastic bags when we go to the stores. If we don't have our own... And then we'll have to ask for paper, but we've got to refuse plastic bags, refuse to use plastic bags. So and we've got to do it regardless of legislation. We don't have a government that cares. And so we just have to take it upon ourselves to be adults and just stop using plastic bags. So give me a better sense, because I'm uh, probably not going to be able to go to Sri Lanka anytime soon, about their maybe environmental issues. You know, you say That's it's beautiful. That's the worst one. But the littering everywhere? Yeah, that's the worst one. And, and what about the that, local people? Why don't they... What, did you have a conversation about yeah, it Yeah, that's what I was talking with, these, this green team. The, the late, Tell me the, about the green team and what was their thought. Well, I did have an interview with the green team, too, and she's going to be on... And the lady... Okay, it's a, an organization, an environmental organization in Sri Lanka, and uh, they're just trying to clean up the streets and picking up litter and, you know... Just volunteering? Yeah, volunteers. Why do they do that? Just to volunteer, I guess. But, but why does it matter to them? Why do that as opposed to something else? I don't. I because there's a bunch of garbage all over the street. I mean, that's the only the only complaint I had about that 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 country at all. That's the only complaint I had. And um, so I did interview, I did interview one of the org organizers, and that's going to be in my second uh, my second video. That's going to be about plastic. The first one's going to be about the Sri Lankan um, irrigation system. And then the second one's going to be about plastic, and then I can show you the monitor and lizard so video and the interview with the lady. People that are listening to this might not ever see those videos, so can you describe a little okay. bit of that important well, stuff for them? you know, they need to go. I think I'm going to put them all on the Warrior Publication Facebook page if they want to find the links. Um, well, what a, can, you des- it, can you describe it a little bit, though? What do you mean? The Imagine that they're blind or they'll never see it. You have to tell them what it's about. Tell me what it's the about. The two videos? Yeah. Well, the first one is about the, the tank and reservoir system that Sri Lanka has. Uh, yeah, okay, so... And then the second one's going to be about plastics and how we should... Let me ask you something about the trip that you didn't film, so you have to okay. tell me about it. Okay. 
Because I've seen some pictures. I, I noticed you were hanging out with a lot of Buddhist people in, yeah, in beautiful yeah, robes. Yeah. Did my they make those were, robes there? Yeah, my friends were uh, are Buddhist. And so I got to know the monks, uh, several of the monks. And um, they're really cool. I mean, I really had a good time. Because my friends uh, teach them English. Uh-huh. And uh, so they had these little classes. And so I was able to sit on one of the classes. And we were really just reading uh, from one of the Buddhist stories uh, out loud so that they could practice their English and we could talk about different words. It was really fun. And then after that, they also, they had their, they have a, a special way of their me, a meal that has to be served to them in a special way. And then they do What's prayers the for you. What do you mean? Um, like you have to serve them in a special way. It's, it's hard to explain, but they stayed for lunch. Uh, oh, so okay. we fed them. So when when you're teaching someone or when you have a guest, you offer them a meal? Is that well, what you're saying? Because they're monks. Because they only they survive on whatever anybody gives them. Hmm. Oh, I so see. So we would invite them for a lunch, and then they also went to the class, and then they had lunch there, and they did a prayer. They have a shrine in their house, a Buddhist shrine, and they um, and they all we all got on mats in front of that, and they had their prayer. It was really cool. Nice. And then um, then later they went to the botanical gardens with us. They met us under a tree. There was this huge tree. And there's all these Buddhist monks in their robes sitting inside the branches of the tree. You know, they've been climbing up there and stuff. Because these are all really young guys, these guys that I met. Uh, you know, I can't tell age, but they're it. like teenagers to 35 maybe. I mean. Is that the age where they train? Or? That's a, well, I, I'm not sure if that's exactly. I don't understand exactly why. But they're just a lot of Buddhist monks in Sri Lanka because it's mostly a Buddhist place. And right. I also met somebody that, well, it, it was really very interesting. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so you met a, a new friend. Yeah, no. Um, I, uh, Did... I met, okay, I, I really became friends with, like, the, the cook and the gardener and the drivers and um i got to know them in fact the the grandson of the cook uh we got to be real good friends and and he's just turning 14 and i i, I was painting and so he was all he so he painted with me so we well, would you... go in the garden and paint flowers together oh nice yeah. yeah i saw some of your drawings of the flowers they're amazing i, I don't see flowers like that around here Were no they no this is like okay the place that i stayed at is two stories, and it had this huge balcony on the top story. And you could see across, uh, there was a river, and across the river to these big mountains on the other side because they lived in the top of a, the mountainous area, oh, okay. on top of a mountain. Wow. And then in between was a river, and then there was a jungle, a small jungle between the river and the house going up the hill. And so there were all these animals and monkeys, and a troop of monkeys would come through sometimes. And um, those those monkeys are so great. Just It's fun just to watch them. Everybody stops and watches the monkeys, even when they're used to being there. Um, but anyway, I could see all that from the balcony, so that was cool. And then I basically stayed in the apartment with the cook, and that's how we got to be friends. And then she would have her daughter and grandson stay there a lot. So we all got to be... And she dressed me up in a sari for this Buddhist uh, ceremony, and um, and we traveled together, too, to, on a safari. She came on a safari with us, and we went and seen elephants. Tell me about the elephants. Yeah, oh, they're... Well, tell me about the safari. The safari, but it's not like, you know, it'll be shooting anybody, of course. It's like a res of... Uh, they, they don't kill anything there, actually. They would be appalled if anybody wanted to kill one of their elephants. They would be appalled if you mention that suggest that they might be eating their cows because I did that and the farmer that owned them said no no curd only they're like members of the family mm. <laughs> he was really appalled that I even said that suggested it but so anyway um they don't kill anything there so when you go on a safari you're just basically in a jeep that has no top on it so you can stick your head up and stand in there and um, just hold on and because he goes over these bumpy terrain because he's going over like elephant footprints and stuff it's, some, it's tracking so, the yeah elephants. and so anyway and then and then we're able to just stand up there with our cameras and um, look for elephants did you see families of elephants or yeah what, tons of elephants like? I got tons of video of elephants I mean we, what was the coolest part there were so of that? many elephants that we got tired of elephants and, and left uh, <laughs> it was it was really you know it was really it was a lot is that the only animal you saw in Safari? Um, well, no, we also saw this thing that we thought was a sloth. To find, come to find out when we finally were able to identify it from the pictures, it was actually just a big squirrel. 
<laughs> Must have been some huge. squirrel, yeah. It was huge. That's um, wild. And then, of course, lizards, oh, we've seen an alligator. There was a cro- or crocodile, I think that's what they call them. That's what they have, is crocodiles. And um, just, you know, and then what, I've seen a bunch of animals just from their house. You know, like I said, I look down in the jungle and there's all kinds of animals. And then also they have a garden with all the all different plants because you can have you, the the season is all year they have two seasons of rice um and then they have all of these fruits and vegetables we ate so good and i ate no meat because they don't eat meat and was um, that a struggle for and you? it wasn't because it was just so much food there and i'll tell you i don't even know what i was eating most of the time but i never felt nauseous or sick or anything it was a very healthy diet what was the coolest fruit or vegetable that you had well they do a lot with coconut like coconut oil and there's coconut in everything whether it's sweet or um, savory or whatever it is. And then there's, um, then they use pineapple. Well, we did because, well, they like pineapple. But there's like mango. There's something called jackfruit. I had never heard of it before. and But that was like so good. It tasted like I was eating fruit roll-ups or something. You know, it was really good. So there's just all different kinds of fruits and vegetables there. That's awesome. Now, I saw in your pictures that you went to a lot of shrines, big shrines. Yeah, yeah. Ancient. Yep. Can you tell me about those? Right. Their, their history goes back. The royals came to the island in 300 B.C., and that's why everything's kind of seems to be 300 B.C. You know, that's when they started working on the water system. There were people that lived there that were like natives that, that um, were not Buddhists. In fact, they eat meat, and they were hunters. They were nomadic. But um, And that might account for the two kinds of people on the island. I'm not sure. But anyway... Um, but then when the royals came there and they tr- started the uh, the uh, irrigation system, then they also spread Buddhism there. And so everybody was a Buddhist on the island. And they took families from different trades, you know, like um, somebody that knew about farming, somebody that knew about making bowls, and somebody who knew about working with metals or whatever they were doing then. Um, they took a family of each of, the, of those that, that lived there, and, um, like, the, of course, the children become whatever their parents were. So they had all these artists and craftsmen, and they made these huge um, statues and um, really intricate designs that carved into rock into caves at first, and then also big buildings and stupas. Um, What's a and, stupa? Well, you know, it looks kind of like a bell, usually. And it's huge, and it's usually solid, like it'll be solid bricks or something, then with plaster over that, and then painted maybe. And um, the reason that people would make them, and these are usually like the royalty that would do it, or people who had a lot of money, they would have them constructed because it gave them merit, because not only were they helping all the people that were, I mean, if they can afford to do this, they have to pay the workers to do it, so they're all, are helping those people, and then once it's built, it's you know going to be like magnificent, and it will make you know tribute to Buddhism to Buddha, and so they get what they call merit for it. So they're accumulating, um, they're accumulating crowns to go to heaven, you know, basically, but only in Buddhist. And- a little different. So these different trades made different types of Buddhas, right? So yeah. different materials? Well, yeah, like there's some there's some that are made like the stupas I was just talking about with bricks, but um, some of them, and now they've got new ones. They're constantly making new ones. There's a big gold one now that you can see in the mountain. How, how big? Quite huge. You can see it from a long, I don't know how tall it is, 40 feet, I mean? I don't know. I mean, it's huge. But the, but they they have really huge, uh, you know, granite and, and other statues in these caves. And and then also they just have shrines all over. They had a relic, the tooth relic. Tooth of Buddha? Yep. It's a, yep. Did you get the story behind that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was smuggled in, I don't know what year it was, and this lady had it in her hair, but she smuggled it into Sri Lanka because she wanted to save it because... You know, there was a religious war, and they were and the other, probably Muslims, I'm not sure, though. Um, or Hindus. Or Hindus, Hindus. It would have been Hindus then, because that would have been before Muslims. Okay, so it would have been Hindus. Um, they um, were trying to get it to destroy it, so she hid it in her hair, and she took it to Sri Lanka for safekeeping, and it's still there. And did you see it? No, but I went to the shrine where it's at, 
And it's kept in this safe. And I got a picture of this safe. What's the safe look like? It's, just, it's very ornate. There's, it's just uh, the temple is decorated, very ornate. And there, but there are other places, other temples that were made for the tooth that were even grander than the one that they have now. And they were uh, made out of stone and everything. And I seen the ruins of a couple of those just while I was in uh, the, the 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 city that I went to. That was like the second official capital of Sri Lanka. Like first it was Annapur. I don't know how to say these words. Um, it, the, that first one started with an A. <laughs> and then uh, the the um, other people, like the Indians, especially South India, would come in and invade all the time and just destroy everything, right? And so they'd have to run to a different... So they made the capital. They ran from that capital, ran to this other one, and built it up, and that was the one that I was in. And that one was further away a from A little bit South farther, India. yeah. It was, like, further to the east, and it's called Polo Wara, something like that. Polo, it's P O L O, something. Um, so, but anyway, um, so that was that that was interesting because I saw all those. And then I also went to some caves at Minera. Um, that's by where we went on the safari. And it these are the ancient ancient caves. Like when they first came, they um, set up shop. You know, like they had their their they they used the caves to store things in, and. Um, then they just kept improving them and improving them until they became really, uh, now they're really, really fancy. That's where that giant Buddha is that that's reclining that I showed you the picture. There's another place that has a reclining Buddha too outside, which is even more well-known, but that's at Polarano. And what is the significance of a reclining versus the regular um, standing? Well, there's, there is. There's different symbols too. Like if his hands are in his lap like this, that's meditation, like just in his lap. If he's holding one hand up with like an OK kind of symbol, that means, uh, that means, uh, that means discussion. They're discussing. And then if the Buddha is that same symbol, but with another, his other hand doing it, like entwined in that first hand in front of him that means teach okay and um the reclining buddha sometimes it it's in reference to him dying because they re believe in reincarnation so this buddha is now dead and you know he's he's maybe gone to the highest place now and so what so you have these shrines are they mostly tourist areas or is the monks there praying what's typically you see the monks all over yeah i got to be friends with some of the monks and um there's like different, like different gangs. Um, there's different kinds of monks. Like some of them wear orange, and the ones that I got to know wore brown. And what is the difference? I don't know. Like I said, I think they're just different uh, groups. You know, probably like different churches or something. But all, like you know, Catholic Catholics have different brethren. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same I think, but only Buddhas. And. <clears throat> Out of that whole trip, what do you think, you know, if you could think of one most valuable experience or wisdom that you've picked up along the way, what, what might that be? Well, I just got so much information um, that I know I can do good stuff with. You know, like I keep getting excited about my environmental things because I really, I really do want to start discussions about the environment and things that are important. And fresh water is so, so important. And then just happening to get that awful video of the lizard, you know, I mean, when people see that, it just makes them sick about plastic bags. And I'm hoping that I can use that to get people to stop using plastic bags. Um, so I really, um, I was really happy about all the information that I had. Did anyone um, that you came across ask you about your experience with water or with plastic kind of around Flint's uh, yeah, water crisis? Because of Flint, everybody, you're, they hear the name Flint. They, yeah, um, they're, that's one polite thing maybe that they don't ask you. Like, uh, like, like if it was a, like if the reason why they knew where Flint was is because of the water and, you know, it's a bad story, then I think they would feel it was impolite to ask me about it, you know. So nobody asked? No. If they knew? No, but so I think that at least one person knew about Flint because they were friends of my friends, so they knew yeah. about it. But I don't know how widespread our story is. I don't know if it goes all the way to Sri Lanka, to be honest. They all know English, and they th I think they know it mostly because of technology because uh -huh. they're, they're used to using the smartphones. But they're not constantly staring at them the way we do. Um, and as far as computers go and computer knowledge, they had technology stores and stuff. 
So, um, so, oh, and I also did see one place that had even a VR like arcade mm -hmm. that you could go into, but I only I didn't see anybody in there except for like one person. Um, is there anything else that maybe I didn't cover that you really, really wanted to get into about that experience or any experience? Well, you know, one America's thing, listening. They, they do have a very strong sense of community. And just like with a water irrigation system, again, they didn't have slavery. It wasn't like the king was being mean and making people do this. They did it because they knew that it was good for them and their, and their community. They were helping each other. They were helping the animals. I mean, did you see other examples of where the community kind of came together and, and maybe had some autonomous action that benefited everybody or cooperative action? Well, I do see a lot of people collecting rain. Um, for personal My, use? Yeah. For, well, for anything like their gardens, um, their toilet situation. That toilet. is interesting. It's different because it's different. But they don't use... They, is, they is it like the China toilets? don't use toilet paper. Oh, okay. But well, they have a different little system that they use, so it's, it's, it's superior, really. Well, tell us. I <laughs> just have a little sprayer by the toilet or the hole in the ground or wherever you have them to be. Um, but they always have a little sprayer, and uh, they just don't use it. They just don't but use toilet paper. Do they have traditional toilets, or is it like China where some they just of them, have Some of them, like I said, some of them, but not all of them. I uh -huh. mean, that's like a Describe the a ones that weren't things. like that. There might just be a hole in the ground with a pipe. But they have had indoor plumbing. That's another thing that they had, indoor plumbing and water coming into their homes in 300 B.C., those ruins, there is there is sewer and water connection and baths besides the reservoirs that everybody swam in, uh, built into that to that system way back then when we were still you know pooping in the woods. You know we didn't have anything. I want to <laughs> ask you about the friend you made, the lady friend who went on your travel with you. Can you give me like a twenty second description of her and, and some of your adventures you had? Oh with yeah, her? I did draw a little picture of her in the book. Tell, tell America about it. Um, well, she was just the, well, she was the lady that I, um, I stayed in her apartment with her because she was the cook. And it was really a nice, though. It was really nice. It was the best place because it had the big balcony and, and, um, yeah. and she, and, oh, and she dressed me up in a sari for, um, the Buddhist wedding. Um, and we just spent a lot of time together. And she had, there was an outdoor kitchen. This house I stayed in had a kitchen upstairs, downstairs, and then one outside. And she used the outside kitchen and so she even helped me make her I helped her make something with rice flour um, and it, it was just uh, you know it was just it was very different they also have um, this burner that though they have this this is another thing they do is they have this system where you put garbage mm -hmm. into this thing behind the kitchen and it turns it into methane and her stoves are ran on that garbage it's amazing. I mean, there's no smell or anything. It's just like a, um, you just stuff, mm -hmm. you know, whatever uh, stuff you have left over from your vegetables in there, and then it makes it into methane. So, but anyway, they have a lot of environmental things like that that they do, and um, I, I just think that the Buddhism is probably um, really a, a good effect, has a good effect on their culture. Was there anybody that talked generally about our culture or criticized or, or? No, that would have been rude. So tell me more They're about very, this. They're very, very kind to, well, the tourists are their main thing right now. Mm -hmm. And tourism. And um, they even have like schools for them to go to, to be like a tour guide or whatever. Like English Just, schools? Or, and... Well, not only that, but to make sure you do everything correctly. And um, they're very, they're, they're very much into tourism. That's how they think they're making, going to make their money. And now, because of the problems they had, they're not getting the tourists that they need. And it's it's really sad. So we got just a couple minutes left. Um, I think we covered almost everything that you wanted to talk about. But I just want to make sure because I'm interested in in this tourism thing a little bit. Um, because the city you stayed in was that the one that had the attack a year or no, two ago? No, no, no. Uh, it wasn't even a year ago. It was just it was less than a year ago. How far was that from where you were staying? Okay, they, okay. There, there was two churches, 
two Catholic churches that were blown up. And it happened actually just a few months ago, like mm -hmm. less than a year ago. Okay. And one of the cities was Colombo, and the other one was, um, I don't know the name of it, but it's on the opposite coast. or But southern, it was in, mm -hmm. they're on the coast. And I was staying in the center um, in the mountains, and, and I was staying with the Buddhists. And it was the Catholics and the Muslims, really, that were, I mean, it was you know, a Muslim the, organization that, that bombed the Catholic. But it was in retaliation to the Christians bombing the the Muslims in um, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So it was like a retaliatory thing. And, but, but you know, we have more terror attacks here. I mean, we, I think we had like three of them while I was gone. Yeah. With AK-47s. They don't use guns or anything like that. So I'm telling you, especially somebody coming from Flint, I guess maybe, um, it's a lot safer there than it is here. So it, don't let that scare you into not going. Well, no, I was also thinking about their perspective, too, because they're so dependent on the tourism, and there's yeah. no tourists, and yeah. there's this maybe general sense of fear. Well, I know they will jump up and hope, open the door for you, try to help you, anything to get a tip. That's one thing that was kind of disturbing. But, um, not, I mean, not too bad. I mean, everybody smiled. If you ever caught anybody's eyes, they would smile at you. Hmm. What Sri Lankan words did you learn so that we can... Put them for posterity for you. None. Them. None. They've been forced to learn English, so I didn't have to. Oh. Isn't that terrible? Singalese words or however yeah. you said it. No. Yeah, but it is very beautiful writing, though. So a couple more minutes. Just describe some of those beautiful things that you saw before we run out of time. Mm -hmm. Like some of the flowers or the trees. You, you drew and painted a bunch. Yeah, I did. I, I did what a lot of painting. What was the weirdest flower you saw at the Botanical Gardens? The most unique. Well, they had a whole room full of orchids, but but you know um, the flowers that they had, a lot of them, the the people that I lived with had in their gardens because they're beautiful and anything grows and it grows because it's tropical. Twelve months a year there, yeah. Though that was one thing is that it was kind of humid all the time, but there was always a breeze. Mm -hmm. So um, the it, it was really hard on my hair. I know that. <laughs> But uh, actually, um, it was it was kind of was hot. Uh, dressing was also a little bit of a challenge sometimes because they would. But I had friends that would tell me what was appropriate, and mm -hmm. for a woman to wear shorts is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. But yet she can bare her middle all she wants because that's how their saris fit, you know. Mm. But um, so there's just some odd things like that that I had to. Oh, and men wear skirts too a lot. A lot of men wear skirts. What do you mean? They're just a wraparound skirt. I bought one for my son. So why did, what did he think of all this? You kind of gave him the story. You just yeah, got yeah. back. He's yeah. never been. No, he. Oh, he. What uh, was his perspective? He was interested, but you know, I think maybe he'll maybe he'll go next time. I don't know. When's the next time you're going back? I'm thinking maybe about two years. Why two years? Because I shouldn't go every year. <laughs> but anyway, it was fun. Are you going to stay with your friends again or somewhere new? I don't know. Are there places you wanted to go to you didn't make yeah. it to? Oh, yeah. I didn't get to ver go to very many places at all, actually, compared to how many there were to go to. If you were going to recommend me someplace to go that you didn't go, where would it be? Oh, there's a train ride I want to take next time. Around the island? Yeah, it, it goes. Uh, you know, I kept hearing about it, but then uh, I didn't get a ticket, so I kind of missed out on that. Next time I'll do it. All right. We're in our final few seconds here. What are your words of wisdom for the world? Uh, community. we got to build community. we got to... We've got to do what's right individually so that collectively we can solve these problems that we have. Save the we have monitor. To, we, have to, we have to view the good, good future and figure out how to get there. And we need to talk about it and plan it and just work towards it and quit being negative. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your story with me. This was a little better than going to the bar and hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.